Well, good afternoon, Murphy's Law Garage viewers. Do you have a 2024 Mustang or any other vehicle with one of these giant iPads on the dash and you're sick and tired of fingerprints and scratches and the glare of the shiny screen and you want it to look like this? Stick around, I've got something for you. All right, so today I'm gonna demonstrate to you the installation of a screen protector kit from the OCD Plug. There's their website right there, the OCDplug.com. They sell a kit. It comes to you kind of like this with alcohol wipes and uh, use this card as a wiper basically. And you've got a, a lens cleaning cloth and here is the screen protector. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, you're going to take this guy right here and put some soapy water in it. Uh, and then you're going to, of course, this is what you're going to spray all over the screen. Um, if you're curious what it looks like to, to do something like this, you, look at my window tent video that was before this. Um, you're going to want to keep this bottle full because you really need this screen and a screen protector wet before you try to apply. I just applied this one. And even though I put a bunch, I had to go back and re-wet to help move it around. Uh, I'm going to go add a little bit more soap and then come back. And then we're going to put this one on so I can show you exactly how this is meant to go on here. And then you can decide uh, which one you'd like. But before uh, we put the other one on, let me show you what it looks like with the car running. You can see the difference in the glare. I can see a reflection of myself in the cluster. Let me start the car here. All right, here it is with it running. You can see with the screens on, let me get at this angle. You see the, the wild difference in the amount of glare that's on that screen? And now, I mean, obviously you'd be a passenger looking at it from this direction, but it gives you a good idea of just how glared the screen is. Or if my wife wants to change the music or the climate controls, this is really hard for her to see and she has to lean over towards me with the light coming in to help her with that. Even as the driver is sitting right here, you see the reflections in the screen right here? That's better when the door is closed, but not much more. It's a pretty dark day today and I've got dark tint, so it's not crazy. But you see how there's basically no resemblance of reflection happening here. So let me go put some more soapy water in here and we're going to go ahead and get that installed there. Boop. All right, so best camera angle I can get you. Hopefully it works for you. I'm hanging off the rear view mirror. I've already cleaned this screen very well with an alcohol wipe. Uh, and I'm just coming back in with this lens cleaning cloth and making sure I don't have any latent dust particles, boogers, uh, fingerprints, anything like that, that I should be concerned about. Now, in the instructions from the OCD plug, they say to use the soapy water solution to clean the screen and then come back with the uh, alcohol wipe if you have a lot of heavy buildup. Though that's probably fine, I would just go straight to the alcohol wipe. Just don't use anything too strong. Uh, you can use rubbing alcohol out the drawer that you use for cuts and stuff. Just don't go over 70 to 80 percent alcohol because sometimes you can actually hurt coatings on screens. That really strong um, rubbing alcohol can actually eat paint off and stuff like that. So be careful with that. Make sure you're not using anything too crazy, but it's pretty uncommon for people to carry the really strong stuff. Regardless, we want this to be very, very clean. So I'm looking at it from a few different angles, making sure I don't see any stubborn fingerprints showing up. No dust latent chilling around. Good. And then the next thing I'm going to do is here's my bottle of uh, soapy water solution and I'm going to get in here and I'm going to soak this. Now, like I said, look at my tent video. If you've ever seen professional tent installed, this may seem harmful. It's not. You need to put a lot of this because the screen protector, much like tent, needs to be able to float. And if it can't, you'll never get it right. You are not placing a sticker here. This is going to be very difficult otherwise. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is wet my fingers. And that's because I need to pick up the screen protector without it sticking to me or me leaving finger oils behind. And once I've got that, I'm going to take the screen protector, lift an edge, and then remove it. Next, I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to pick something to line up on-ish. Try not to push hard on this because if you do, it's going to bite. Wiggle this around a bit. Move it around. I think I got it pretty darn good first try. Doesn't always work out that way, be forewarned. Uh, you're not gonna be a pro at this, so take your time. As long as you've got your liquid in here, you can slide this around. It's going to take more force than you think it would to move it, so just remember that while you're in here wiggling. Something else you're probably gonna notice Actually, that corner looks okay, it does. Something else you're gonna notice is that um, both of these screens, um, the top of it is very straight, the side is very straight, but the, the, the tops right here, uh, the plastic bezel kind of curves like that. So whenever you're lining up your screen protector, pay attention to these sides, not this, because this has a curve to it, that one's like that too. And uh, that'll help make sure that you get it in the right place. So now I'm taking the OCD plugs card I'm going to fold it over something like this uh, and that keeps me from accidentally scratching the screen protector and then I'm going to very carefully apply pressure and work my way out apply pressure work my way out uh, and I'm just gonna do a really light pass both directions first and this is to make sure that the screen protector had a chance to bite and then once I'm relatively certain it's it's there, it's not just gonna fall off uh, or try to slide around, which it takes more pressure than you'd think, unless your water's super soapy. I'm gonna start working the uh, water out from behind the screen protector. Like that. And then I'm gonna go back this way so the point here is to get the water back out from behind the screen protector. That way it'll stick. And if you can hear my neighbor's Beastie Boys playing in the background right now, and that's not your cup of tea, uh, I apologize. But sometimes we don't get to pick what our neighbors listen to. Hopefully YouTube doesn't strike me for that. Uh, your, your point here is to get the water out from behind the screen protector so it will stay and stick. Um, you're not going to get all of it out, though you could certainly sit here for an hour while it's nice and hot and work it until it was completely dry very quickly. Um, and if you had some place to go, you might do that with the actual touchscreen one, because if you don't get enough of the water out, the touchscreen will get upset and not want to work. Um, but I don't have that issue here. And even at 80 degrees, this is pretty darn dry already. I'm sure it'll probably take a solid day even at 80 degrees for that to dry out perfect. I can still see a couple of bubbles in there and that's perfectly normal. Uh, let's see, I see a couple of bubbles here and I'm just making sure that I've got as much of the water reasonably as I could get out and then I don't see any uh, air bubbles, right? We don't want any air bubbles. If we had air bubbles, we would want to back the screen protector off very carefully and then uh, lay it back down again with a bunch of soapy water behind it to get the air bubbles to come out. And that's the other important bit about the use of the uh, soapy solution, the water, is that you're not just floating that screen protector. You really want the air to get excluded uh, while you're applying. And if you don't make sure to get enough solution back there, you could trap an air bubble. Like right here, we have some water that's trapped and I'm trying not to be too aggressive because you could actually possibly uh, harm the, uh, the protector. 
just want to make sure I've gotten as much water out as I reasonably can. And I think that's probably about where I'm going to leave it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it looks good. So if there's one criticism I'd give the OCD plug, uh, if y'all are watching uh, over there at OCD plug, I imagine you are, you're a small business. Um, the very corners of some of these die cuts, and it seems to be on the same side on both of mine. This one's a little rough too, but this corner on both screen protectors um, has some, um, some chafe hanging off the edge of it. Uh, it's not perfectly round either, not as perfectly round as the others. And what I'll probably do is very carefully use a razor blade to clean it up. Let me, let me get you all a little closer. Here you can see the water trapped underneath the screen protector that's perfectly normal. But OCD plug, do you, geez, Siri, hush. Do you see that that rough edge right there? This I could clean up with a fingernail in, in a hot second. I'm sure the heat's going to help that chafe uh, work its way off too. It's mostly off there. You can see this one right here is the same story. The corner isn't perfectly round. Um, and it's got just a little bit of chafe right there. Let me try from here. See so you see that a little better. Uh, so it's fighting. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, you know, that, that rough corner right there, and I get it, that's kind of uh, a thing whenever you're working with these materials. You can see the same thing here. There's some chafe on the edges. But I know, and maybe not all customers know, that when this gets warm, um, you'll kind of be able to just rub on this and it'll self heal itself and it won't show anymore. Part of that is the soapy water solution is making that look more obvious than it is. But even then, if I didn't tell you that the car had screen protectors on it now, more than likely you'd have no idea. All right. So now that we've got both screen protectors on, let's start this thing up and see what it looks like. close the door, at least on this side. I still have the other door open for light. But look at how much better, look, look at how much better the reflections are. I mean, so as much as I enjoy the beautiful jewel black screens, um, it's not worth the annoyance of the fingerprints and the glare. Um, something to be noted here, having that really shiny black screen also increases the contrast of the colors on the screen. So you're going to notice that the blacks aren't quite as black and they, they look a little more gray. Um, to me, I notice that sort of thing. I think the average person probably wouldn't. And I will quickly get used to this and not realize it. But I think... It looks amazing. And the lack of glare on the screens is absolutely fantastic. So <clears throat> y'all let me know what y'all think. Uh, if y'all are interested in ordering one of these kits, call up the OCD plug. Let them know Murphy's Law Garage sent you. Anyways, thanks for coming along with this video. Real simple, quick, how to put these things on. Not everybody knows how, so it's worth showing y'all how to put a screen protector on if you're interested. Regardless, y'all check out the OCD plug. And as usual, we love you. God bless. Peace.